What's the reason for five offerings instead of one? One offering could never illustrate the full meaning and blessings that come to us through our Lord. This is especially true of the minka, the food or grain offering. While this was an offering, it was not a sacrifice. Hebrew, zibach, a slaughter, since no blood was shed. Here we focus on Christ's life rather than his death. In Leviticus 2, we see three kinds of grain offering. The handful of fine flour, verses 1 to 3, various kinds of cakes or wafers, verses 4 to 11, and the first fruits offering, verses 12 to 16, composed of, quote, green heads of grain roasted on the fire, verse 14. These illustrate the sufferings of his life in three parts. The handful of fine flour pictures the costliness of his incarnation and hidden years until his presentation to Israel at his baptism. Fine flour, the simplest and purest form of the offering, shows there was nothing uneven in him, the bread of God who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world, John 6:33. The second category told of the fiery trials of his public life, from his spirit anointing until his agony in Gethsemane. Some of these trials were fully exposed to others, like the cakes baked on a plate, some partially hidden, like those made in a frying pan, then those sorrows known only to God, like the ones prepared in an oven. But Christ's sufferings didn't end with his death. Christ, the first fruits, 1 Corinthians 15, 23, cut down prematurely like the green ears, suffers with his people today. Notice three things missing. There was no blood, so our focus is on Christ's life. There was no leaven, Leviticus 2, 11, with one exception on the day of Pentecost, because the loaves there speak of Christ's mystical body, the church, although the leaven's action has been arrested by fire. Leaven speaks of the ever-expanding influence of sin, but our Savior, quote, knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21, did no sin, 1 Peter 2.22, and in him there is no sin, 1 John 3.5. Third, there was to be no honey. Honey is natural sweetness, and Christ was never guided by mere sentiment. For example, when Peter told him not to think of going to die, he replied, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you do not savor the things of God, but the things of men. Matthew 16, 23. Christ was already a sweet savor. No honey was needed. Now, let's take a look at the added ingredients. Quote, he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it, Leviticus 2.1, and every offering of your grain offering you shall season with salt, verse 13. So there it is, olive oil, frankincense, and salt. Consistently, Oil pictures the Holy Spirit's ministry, and he was certainly crucial to Christ's life on earth. Three words were used for applying the oil. Pour, verse 1, speaking of the fullness of the Spirit, for the Spirit did not come, quote, by measure to him, John 3, 34. Anointed, verse 4, suggesting the fitting of the Spirit for his ministry, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, and mingled, verse 4, pointing to the fellowship of the Spirit, because he was always in perfect harmony with him. The second item was frankincense. Remember that all of the first offering was consumed? Now here is the word all regarding the second offering. A priest was to, quote, take from it his handful of the flour and oil, with all of the frankincense, Leviticus 2.2. 2. Christ's life was lived all for God's pleasure. 
The salt is called, quote, the salt of the covenant, verse 13, the preserving influence of God's promises. Christ is the man of the open book, Luke 4, 17, Revelation 5, 5. So we see added the Spirit of God, fellowship with God, and the Word of God, the three active ingredients in Christ's life as they should be in ours.